Welcome to Quick Pilot Topics. Visit our website at avtutorials.com for our free two hour ebook audiobook titled 12 Easy Ways Pilots Get in Trouble. Now, let's join Stephen Russ. Welcome to Quick Pilot Topics, episode number nine. I'm Steve, an airline pilot, flight instructor, flight engineer, previous examiner, and an AP mechanic. I'm joined today by my brother, Russ, and he's got great questions. Russ, what have you got for us today? So I have a question about terminology. It always seems like pilots speak in such specific language. What's the basis for that? To sound cool. That's what for. Now, really, <laughs> well, exact phraseology really is important in the cockpit. Simple errors in communication in the cockpit or over the radio can have dire consequences. You know, as humans, we speak with a lot of euphemisms. This with things such as humor and metaphors and other types of speech, but the fact is, it doesn't work well in the cockpit. You know, to give an example, if we say, walk a mile in his shoes, we obviously don't mean to really do it. But in our day-to-day -day speech, we, we know that and we respond accordingly. That doesn't work with flying, though. So, can you give me an example? Yeah, this is a good one. A lot of pilots have heard this. Uh, I apologize if you have heard it in the past, but uh, here it goes. There's the age-old tale of a 1950s vintage prop liner, probably a Douglas DC-4 or DC-6, and the pilots are making an approach to a runway somewhere in bad weather. In those types of big prop aircraft, the flight engineer controlled power settings to a certain degree, since prop, mixture, and cow flap settings are really critical to running the engines properly. Anyway, as the captain was flying the approach, he decided that a go-around was necessary. He promptly called back to the flight engineer, Take off power! Meaning, he wanted the equivalent of take off power so that he could initiate the missed approach. In confusion, the flight engineer brought the throttles back to idle, thinking that the captain wanted him to take off the power. As the story goes, there was a smashing of large airplane against the ground as a result. Mm -hmm. Whether this tale is true or not, it can be said that errors in communication like this have taken place in aviation. Wow. I guess that is a big factor. Let's assume the story is true. Wouldn't the flight engineer simply have known that a reduction of power to idle was absolutely the wrong thing to do, given their altitude? Yeah, we probably could make that argument. But since it's probably a tall tale, there's no way to tell. But here's an example of a true story that occurred in the late 1950s, or maybe it was the early 1960s, I don't remember exactly when, uh, during the flight test program of a large four-engine jet. The test crew was conducting maximum weight takeoff performance tests at Edwards Air Force Base. The left seat pilot was a test pilot for the manufacturer, but the right seat pilot was an FAA pilot with minimal experience in that type of airplane. The takeoff plan called for an engine to be brought to idle at rotation to simulate an engine failure. Now, for various reasons, the takeoff performance speeds were incorrectly calculated, and the crew didn't know that at the time. So they proceeded with the takeoff. They lifted off the long, flat, desert lake bed runway, and at the appropriate time, the FAA pilot did what he was supposed to. He brought one engine back to idle, simulating an engine failure, and as the test pilot who was flying the airplane, continued, it was clear that something wasn't right. The airplane was wallowing, it was failing to gain airspeed, it wasn't climbing like it was supposed to, and the pilot was doing everything he could to maintain control of the airplane. He immediately called to the FAA pilot, bring it up, meaning the engine. Instead, the FAA pilot brought up the landing gear, not what the pilot intended. The airplane continued wallowing, but airspeed did start to build, and they were able to climb out safely. And it's an example where, to say bring it up, that could have meant either the landing gear or it could have meant bring the engine up. Right. So I guess when you say bring it up, the word it can have lots of meanings. That's right. Uh, here's another example. Take the transfer of flight controls from one pilot to another. A common yet poor practice among pilots is to say, you've got it, when switching controls to the other pilot. Unfortunately, that can mean you're correct about something, or you're doing it properly, etc. If this miscommunication occurs, and the first pilot ceases being the pilot flying the airplane, now you've got two pilots sitting there, neither of whom is flying the airplane. Or, consider a crew on final approach. If the pilot monitoring said, get it down, what does that mean? I guess it means descend lower. Okay, but what if it also 
the earth speed down or get it right, which is even more vague. So how should pilots communicate to each other? The bottom line is that pilots really have to make a conscious effort to think before they talk. Use exact phraseology and not slang. For instance, say, reduce your airspeed. Or when transferring flight controls, the pilot flying should say, you've got the airplane. Then the pilot who's taking the flight controls should respond, I've got the airplane. You should never say, I've got it. Again, the word it can mean a million different things. I guess people in general should learn to communicate this way. It's a really good concept. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I mean, uh, we could probably counsel uh, spouses everywhere to learn this technique and save a bunch of marriages on the way. <laughs> so uh, it, it is really important and a really good question today. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. We do appreciate it. We hope you catch us on the next episode of Quick Pilot Topics. Visit avtutorials.com for a free two-hour ebook audiobook titled 12 Easy Ways Pilots Get in Trouble. Remember to listen next week and happy flying. <laughs>